After the Australian bushfires and pandemic lockdown, Louis and I wanted to get out there. We wanted to explore the breathtaking locations that are so close to home and to reconnect with both nature and ourselves. It's so easy to remain stagnant and to not even realize. We went into this challenge knowing it was going to pose so many and that's exactly why we did it. We were ready to be pushed out of our comfort zones, not just as people, but also as filmmakers. So we decided to travel 1,000 kilometers and hike for 19 hours to see seven sunrises in seven days. Oh, and we wanted to make a documentary about it. So in this video, you'll get a behind the scenes look at what it was like to go on this crazy journey. I really hope you enjoy. Let me start off by saying that I for one went into this experience completely naive and I knew it. Okay, so we are a few days out from beginning the challenge and I'm really, really excited for it. I have never done anything like this before. I can't really think of any negative things going into it because I just don't really know what to expect too much. I know it's going to be cold and I know it is definitely going to be quite a big challenge for me just because I'm not an avid hiker and I haven't really like ever camped before. I've camped a couple of times in school, on school camps. While it was great to be entering this experience positively and to be doing my best to physically prep, I was really lacking some of the mental preparation for what was to come. Our first sunrise was on Mount Biwa. So on the Friday afternoon prior to this challenge, we decided to do a test hike and shoot so we could start the week off on a really confident note. And unfortunately, it just did not go to plan. We weren't entirely sure on the way up. Louis kind of like looked around because it was just like this big slab of rock face. Um, and he was looking around and said, like, okay, cool. I think we should go up this way. And I just looked at it and I just, absolutely froze yes i have done rock climbing yes i've done bouldering i love both of them but like they there are heaps of safety measures in place and i feel safe when i'm on the wall the part that louis was wanting to climb it was just sheer rock and it was so steep if you slipped you wouldn't be able to grip onto anything you would just slide all the way down and then potentially like off the bottom yeah so i just froze and i just started crying because i was just terrified i have a massive fear of heights and a massive fear of falling just the further i got up the more i just started bawling eventually we made it up the really slabby part and we realized there was a way easier path like we weren't supposed to go up this super sketchy slab Always, always, always be prepared. Prepared people are alive people. And thankfully this experience allowed both Louis and I to be way, 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 way more prepared. Hello, we are at the halfway point up Mount Biwa and I've just done that terrifying bit that scared me on the rock and I was fine. Wasn't I fine? Yeah. <laughs> um, and now we've got the bit to go that I haven't done before because I chickened out last time, but the climbing shoes are really helping and overall I'm having a really good time so far. I'm feeling good, I'm excited, apologies for the light. Bye. Okay, guess where we are. After that terrible test shoot and overall horrible experience, I really didn't want to go back and face that and for the next 12 hours Louis and I both believed that I wouldn't be able to complete the shoot. We went back home and did a lot of research and found some things that hopefully I would be more comfortable with if I implemented them and Louis really helped me kind of get through the mental side of just facing that mountain again. Ultimately this climb, this shoot, this experience, this documentary was something that I knew deep down I really wanted to do and I had this massive drive in me to push through. And the funny thing is, Mount Biwa, the climb and the overall experience on that first day was actually my favorite climb of the entire trip and I honestly cannot wait to go back there again.
don't know if you can hear me that well, but it is day two and what a beautiful morning this has been so far. Wow. It's freaking incredible. And like, I'm enjoying myself so much that it's not even that cold. I feel insanely good right now. I feel so grateful for just giving myself this opportunity and taking it and just like making the most of it, putting my fear aside and just going for it. And oh my God, I've forgotten how incredible it is to be up this early. And I forgot how many incredible locations are so close to where I live. I'm so lucky. But, I mean, like, it's pretty incredible. So this morning was uh, rough. Um, just waking up was really tough. We were both really exhausted and we didn't get to bed as early as we would have liked. Still got like enough sleep, probably like seven hours or so but just after the two big days yeah I'm just really we're both really really tired um and it was like raining and it's cold and everything this morning so it was a bit tougher but the actual um hike itself was pretty chill which I was very grateful for and I got to use these sticks which oh my god so good so helpful because i always i just get tired walking and like using my arms as well a like boosted morale so much and b i don't know i just really liked it it was really helpful and i found it a lot more fun yeah we've got a big day ahead of us we're gonna play it by ear a lot i mean that's what happens when you're out in nature you have to be submissive to the elements and so we're just gonna play it by ear see how we go we can't climb mount barney if it's raining i feel like it's all been like leading up to the camping and leading up to these really big hikes that pose a real challenge in so many different ways so hopefully we do get to do that but obviously we've got to play it safe we've got to be safe nothing is worth potentially harming ourselves or anything in any way so safety is a priority and we'll just see how we go and I'll keep you updated as much as I can. Point and smile. <laughs> you said point and smile and I went I pointed and then I smiled. <laughs> How you feeling? Nervous. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, I am. I'm good. just nervous. Good. How are you feeling? Feeling good. It's very nice and cool, which means it's going to be nice and easy, but yeah, it's, we got a, lot, a big walk ahead of us and then we'll get there. We'll get somewhere, regardless we're camping somewhere tonight, so it's exciting. And there's already some other people on the mountain so we're good we're good to go here's our bags that's louis that's lauren's got some sticks and some other little stuff we're good to go as you can see here i was really really nervous to climb barney both louis and i at this point were actually so exhausted and 
on the down low, we were really, really close to skipping Cordova altogether and going straight to Barney because we were just so exhausted. And then we had to also take into the fact that we were gonna do this massive hike with really heavy camping gear and really heavy film equipment as well. I am not gonna lie, I am struggling hardcore. I am really tired physically, mentally, emotionally. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. We've been hiking for probably like an hour and a quarter. We've still got probably two and a half hours before we reach the campsite where we're stopping for the night. And the it's, it, I'm just tired and I guess knowing that there's such a big way to go, even from the start, like it was just kind of playing with me mentally. The bag is so heavy and like, oh, it's just killing my shoulders and like up through my neck and into my head. I don't mean to be like totally just complaining the whole time. Like right now I'm sitting here, I've got water, I have hot crust bun, like overall things are fine. <laughs> like I just am really, So I am in a tent. Um, it's about 3.50 in the afternoon and we didn't make it up to the top. Louis helped me and made me realize that you know it's not about pushing yourself a ridiculous amount to the point where it's unsafe um, just to get to the top. Um, we went back down to the first campsite we saw closest to the base um, and we've set up camp here. Louis was saying that one of the things he was most excited about doing was just like camping together because um, we would never done it before and so now we get to really kind of focus and enjoy that. It's kind of spinning a bit, it's definitely going to rain tonight um, and it just would have been too dangerous for us. We passed some rangers on the way up and they um, kind of put us off from continuing on. They were like, oh you're going up too late. Um, and then we met some people on the way up that we passed back on the way down when we came back to this campsite and they were like, oh yeah, the rangers came. When they passed us, they were worried about you two and um, everything and, you know, just knowing that the rangers were worried about us, it kind of reaffirms that we made the right decision and now we do just get... They saw the state I was in, they knew what the weather was like and they knew the rest of the climb that we had to complete. The professionals were really, really worried about us. We made the right decision. We have made it to the top of Mount Maroon. So proud of both of us. Yesterday was rough, but we've turned it around, turned it on its head, and we've pulled through. And the climb was really, really enjoyable. Definitely more of my style. As you can see, there's not much of a sunrise happening. Even though it's not ideal conditions, I'm still feeling great. We are almost, I feel probably like three quarters of the way down Mount Barun now. And vibes are high, things are good, it's clearing up, and I am keen to go to a cafe and get these pancakes that I've been craving for like days. So I'm ready. Oh my 
my goodness. Okay, so we are home from Mount Maroon and I'm exhausted. We've done, we spent a few hours just like unpacking things, doing um, so much washing, hanging it out and just like then both sitting down to like Louis editing photos. I'm starting to edit the video and the thing is, is that like I'm most excited for Garoween. Like I have been the whole time. I think it's the most like unique landscape and I'm so excited to go there. I've never been there. Going there to like camp is like the last thing that I feel like doing. But I know that like the weather is apparently going to be perfect for it. Um, so I just have to push through and get myself there. This is one of my favourite places to come. It brings back so many childhood memories and like I got really a bit choked up when we were driving here, even in the dark, just knowing that we were coming, knowing where we were and um, it's a really, really special place in my heart. So I'm just so grateful that the weather is beautiful and I get to see the sunrise with someone that I love and I don't think I've ever come to see the sunrise here before actually. Um, I've seen the sunset a few times but this is really special and new and really good way to start to kind of round out. Okay, so we have made it to Girouin National Park <laughs> and um, we've set up camp and now we're just going to go for a walk to kind of suss out where we go in the morning because it's going to be dark. But yeah, last one, Keen, because on the, on the drive in we kind of saw like where we're going a bit and it looks so different to everything else we've done, um, not just this week but like ever before. So I'm really keen to see it from sunrise, hopefully it's not too cloudy or anything up there, but yeah, last one, the one I'd be most excited for and uh, we'll see how we go. We're here. Day seven. There it is, I see the sun. Oh my god, okay, so we are we're here. come up trying to stay somewhat warm <laughs> I have no idea else it's just stunning to see this place in the light um, it's incredible this rock is so grippy I've never been anywhere like here before so this is something really 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 special <laughs> So that was that. We finished our challenge, packed up the tent and made the drive home. What you will not be seeing in this video is the hours and hours and hours that it took to sift through the footage, process the footage, edit, cut, color, design, mix, export, everything for that documentary. Ultimately, we have ended up with something that Louis and I are pretty happy with and we think we've made a pretty cool little documentary which we would really appreciate your love and support on. As you have seen in this video or not have seen, I didn't include any of the sunrises or really beautiful footage that we captured because I've saved that all for the documentary and I don't want to spoil that. So if you do want to see that and trust me, there is some really, really cool stuff in there. Then I've left a link in the video description below and feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. We won't be uploading as often as I do here, but we have some pretty cool trips coming up. So if you do wanna see them, then subscribe and stay tuned.
Overall, this was a really, really enjoyable and worthwhile experience for Louis and I to complete both the challenge and the actual making of the documentary. It definitely wasn't easy, but we were not there to be comfortable and nature really did reward us for it. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do want to follow us or our journey or our experiences or whatever more than I've left the link to both my Instagram and Louis's Instagram also in the description below. I upload new videos every Thursday and I really, really cannot wait to see you in the next one. I love you and have a great rest of your day. Bye.